You know, it is amazing. And and Troy Aikman said it last night. He goes, you know, if if uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, score a touchdown here at the end of regulation, I would go for two. <laughs> so would I. Yeah. I mean, you know, Patrick Mahomes is eight and zero oh in overtime. Eight and zero. Oh. I think about that for it's a crazy. second. Yeah, he he basically owns the fourth quarter in overtime, and whether he's hurt or he's not. Remember, a few years ago, he played with that bad ankle, that high ankle sprain, that very few guys could ever play with, and he played with it and played great with it, and ended up winning a Super Bowl with it. And last night, it was the left ankle that he tweaked <clears throat> last week, and uh, he tweaked it again last night. And you, you, the way that he went off the field, you were wondering whether or not he was going to come back, and then he did. Man, he is just he is just unbelievable. Look at this. So after you get from Mahomes and Bradshaw on this list of best record in OT regular season games, you get Trent Dilfer, Brock Osweiler, and Marcus Mariota, which is funny because I hadn't thought about Brock Osweiler in I don't know how long, and Al referenced Brock Osweiler this morning on the warm-up show, not for this stat, but in relation to paying guys who stink. <laughs> and now Brock Osweiler makes it into the show again. I wonder who is he, he's right. voting for the, today, Brock Osweiler. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But those uh, <laughs> that those are regular season stats. He has two in the uh, playoffs, too, Patrick Mahomes. Yes, he overtime. does. So um, he is uh, he, he's an amazing football player. And, you know, listening to Troy try to explain, like, the things that he does on the field. Less, I thought he did a good job. I mean, for those of us who played the position and watching him play, it's just ridiculous how, how things come so easy to him and how he sees the field and knows what he has to get done. And then he has this very special relationship with Travis Kelsey, and now he's developing a relationship with DeAndre Hopkins, mm -hmm. which is scary too. And, you know, they, they've uh, – they got the full complement now going, and if they get totally healthy, they're going to be really, really difficult to beat. The question will be: Is will they go undefeated? No, and that's like the no, one that that's the no. one thing that that they haven't done yet. Yeah, they haven't I gone know. undefeated. It's and, sort of like the Patriots back yes. when they were winning all those Super Bowls, and in 2007 they were they were doing it. I, I think it's much harder now to go undefeated than it even was back in 2007. Obviously, there's an extra game which makes it harder, but it's just, it's tough. And you just see the crazy nature of the NFL from week to week and some of these upsets and things that you never expect to happen. So I, I would never put anything past Patrick Mahomes. He is capable of anything. And yes, it's really him and, and the coaching and everything else. And they got to Spagnola and Andy Reed. And we understand Matt Nagy's back there. I mean, they're just, they're just have a great coaching staff and the best player in the world, but undefeated is tough. I would him. say, you know, all right. So here they, here's their schedule. Just so you understand yep. it. So Denver at home next week, and then they have to go to Buffalo. Then they're at Carolina. Then they got the Raiders, and then they're at home against the Chargers. So Buffalo and the Chargers will be tough games. They're at Cleveland. They have Houston at home. They're at Pittsburgh and at Denver at the end of the season. So I, you know, there are a couple of places in there where they could lose. I could see them losing. Yeah, but they'll be favored in every one of these games. Oh, one hundred percent. Why wouldn't yeah. they be favored? No, they know. have the best quarterback on the planet, and I, I can't say enough about just again, like if you're a Kansas City Chief fan. And you watch him every single week. You're, you're just you're. It's like that's what you want. Yeah, that's what every team wants. They want a quarterback that kind of handles the game like this. You don't have to go out there and throw for 400 yards every game and five touchdowns. But when the game is on the line, you got to make plays, especially if you're injured. You know they're they're trying to get DeAndre Hopkins up to speed. Next thing you know, he's got two touchdowns. You know, why? Because the ball hits him right in the chest. Yep. You know, and he just moves around back there. He'll take a sack. The only time he really gets in trouble is when he, I believe he gets bored. And then he tries to force the issue and he'll throw an interception here or there. But my God, I mean, he is just so calm, cool, and collected. And, you know, he is everything that every quarterback needs to be. And it's really hard to get to, to where he is right now. Yeah, the Chiefs were one of those franchises before Patrick Mahomes got there. And it's something we don't talk about or think about now that they basically have this dynasty and we're in the midst of watching it. You know, they had a Super Bowl a long time ago, much like the Jets. It was Super Bowl four. It was the Hank Stram matriculate the ball down the field. They had a great fan base, great stadium, and they were okay. But they never really got over the hump. They were just a good franchise <laughs> that would have a lot of heartbreaks when they did make the playoffs. They had good players that came in and out of there. Derek Thomas being one, the RIP, but stuff like that. So, and then all of a sudden, what changes? They get the guy, and then that's it. 
and then they have a dynasty. So, I mean, it's just, I know it's so impossible to get the best player in football, one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen, and how a lot of it is scouting, but some of it's just luck and where you end up and what other teams see. But, you know, if, if you're someone who is a fan of a franchise that's been dormant and you're thinking to yourself, like, man, I'm never going to be able to see championships. I mean, think about the Kansas City Chiefs. It was decades and decades that they... They were just a team that was looking back on that one Super Bowl. And now all of a sudden, here they are. And they, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes are driving this thing right into NFL history. They were close with Marty Schottenheimer. And then and then they, you know, they had Dick Vermeil there for a while. Yeah, but they then were Herm always, Ed, then right. Herm Edwards got there. Yeah, but they never had they, Todd Haley. A lot of heartbreak though, you know. It wasn't until Andy Reid came there and stabilized everything. Yep. And they had Alex Smith, you know, Andy, you know, had Alex Smith and they would win. And there were games, I, I remember towards Alex's, you know, final chapter there in Kansas City before he went to Washington. Because, you know, Alex Smith is kind of like a guy that you'd want to have if you can't have Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Or if you can't have uh, Josh Allen or Joe Burrow. You, you'd want him to be your quarterback because you could trust him. And he'll go out there, he'll get everybody set, he'll get everybody in the right formations. He'll make all the right checks at the line of scrimmage. He'll communicate to his team. But he's just not going to like ignite the offense. He's not going to make the big plays or the key plays. That, and, and there were times where they were in the playoffs with Andy Reid where uh, Alex just wouldn't, Alex Smith just wouldn't like let it go. You know what I mean? Like he just wouldn't let it go. Like Patrick is completely different. And man, he is just an amazing football player. And he has every attribute that you want. He's got the body style. He's got the arm strength. He's got the accuracy. And he's got the wherewithal, the understanding of where he is in the game, what he needs to get done. And Troy was explaining this last night, and I was like, man, this is right on exactly how you want to describe the way that Patrick Mahomes plays. I got a question for you, and it has nothing to do with Patrick Mahomes. It actually has to do with the other quarterback in this game who played well without his top two wide receivers. If Baker Mayfield were on the Giants, how much better would they be this year? I think they would be a lot better, you know, because he's so fiery. And he's exactly what, uh, you know, Brian Dayball is looking for. I feel like that pairing together would do some special things like Dayball and Baker Mayfield. Not that Baker Mayfield's available. I just, I mean, I look at Baker Mayfield because we talk so much about what's next for the Giants and finding that guy and who is it. And if you don't draft him, where are you going to find him? And Baker Mayfield's that perfect example of a guy who was bouncing around, but he works his ass off. He has a lot of energy and he found this home in Tampa where he is playing his ass off. And like that, if the giants can't find somebody in the draft this year, they got to find the closest version of that somewhere in free well, agency I or mean, a trade, I mean, which it makes it so difficult. I know, but I'm just trying to give another example of a team that found a guy that I'll tell gave you them who, energy. I'll tell you who might be available next year. Derek Carr. Oh, God. But oh, okay. Uh, remember, mean, remember, remember Rob Sala really wanted Derek Carr? Yeah. Okay. Rob Sala's not here anymore, and Michael Thomas called him so ass that he should get his ass beat. <laughs> I, I, his own teammate, I know. Right. Which, it, is really, which is really a shame. But I, I will just say that, you know, they, they went from Drew Brees to Derek Carr. And it just goes to show you how much in charge and how uh, much of a great leader Drew Brees was when he was playing there. And yeah. even though Derek Carr is a very fine football player, he's he's like, you know, reminds me of Daniel Jones. He's a, he's a really good football player. But, it, you know, is he going to raise the level of play with of the players around him? No, I, I Look at – I know that DeAndre Hopkins is not DeAndre Hopkins of five years ago or six years ago. Mm -hmm. He's still a really good player. And he's a veteran – and they had to bring somebody in because of the injuries that Kansas City has suffered at the wide receiver position. And he's still playing with Travis Kelsey, who just finds ways to get open. And they run their own plays, by the way. Like, I, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen players play the way that Patrick Mahomes plays, his, plays with Travis Kelsey. I've never seen that. So, um, but you, you see how Patrick just raises the level of everybody's play around him. You know, so you're Kareem Hunt. You're sitting on the couch. You get a call. Listen, we got all these injuries. Come back here and come run for us. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Kareem Hunt is running for 100 yards a game. Yeah, but I'll, I'll give you just on it because, you know, getting Patrick Mahomes is like one in a, a million. 
But getting someone like Baker Mayfield is not. And he's a guy who raised the play everybody on the field yesterday, too, because there was no Mike Evans. There was no Chris Godwin. He went toe-to-toe to Patrick with Patrick Mahomes on the road in the rain. Like, Just goes to show you how stupid Cleveland is. Yeah, well, of I mean, course. I, that's the thing. Now, maybe maybe Baker wore out his welcome in Cleveland. I don't know. I mean, he was doing a lot of commercials, <sighs> doing a lot of different things that off the field. That was definitely on the Browns more than, than anything else. I, he wasn't doing I mean, think about They brought in, like, wore out his welcome. Look who they brought in. I know that, but what I'm saying to you, like, we don't know. Before Deshaun Watson got there, we don't know all the things that were going on internally. I don't. I have no idea. And I can't understand for the life of me watching Baker not only play now at Tampa, but also doing what he did with the Rams in those three games that he ended up playing for the Rams. I think it was three games. And, you know, and he was battling it out with Sam Darnold to become the the, the quarterback of the, the Panthers. You know, and it just whatever. So he's had quite the journey. And he's finally figured out how to play the game, and he found the right team for himself. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Like, are, are the Giants going to go after a guy like Anthony Richardson if he becomes available? If, if they don't, if they're not able to draft their guy in the draft, it was really the question. So we have to preface it with that. And I don't know. I mean, I, I would say probably not just from the stuff we've seen from him already. But then again, Brian Dable might sit and look at Anthony Richardson and say, man, I could be the guy – who could fix him. I mean, you know, I, I know these, these names aren't exciting, but I mean, Sam Darnold is probably going to be available at the end of this year. After, you know, in the year that he's putting together, I'm sure that unless he goes and, and wins a Super Bowl or takes the Vikings to the Super Bowl, which is unlikely, they're going to go with a healthy J.J. McCarthy next year, and Sam Darnold will probably earn an opportunity to start elsewhere. That's a guy who could be out there. Don't, yeah, but another guy that, you know, I just uh, – I don't see him coming back to New York unless it's the only team that's going to give him a chance. To that's start. going to give him a chance to start. I, I just don't see him coming back here. I mean, it's pretty nice playing indoors pretty much, you know, half your games, if not more, because you, you're playing in Detroit. You're obviously playing, you know, anywhere else that there may be a dome, but that, that there's something to be said about that. Oh yeah. And with an offensive coach and one of the best wide receivers in football too, <laughs> on top of that, I'd be like who has that to offer next year? Uh, not a lot of teams. Well, no. I, I, we don't, we don't even know at well, at the giants point. have an offensive coach and a great, what hope we hope is a great wide receiver in Malik neighbors. I mean, they do stop dropping the passes. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Right. And then saying crazy stuff after the game about not being able to call the plays and implying that the play calling is bad. I mean, yeah. I, I told you yesterday <clears throat> that, 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 that goes over like a lead balloon. Yeah. When rookies start, you know, pontificating about, you know, offensive play calling, like this guy has just got here. You know, and he's already missed games because of a concussion, and he's already dropped the most passes in the league. And now all of a sudden he's out there giving his point of view about, you know, what what we should be doing, what I you know, I'm not doing. I come on. Yeah. I mean, so that's you know, we going OBJ two now all of a sudden. Yeah. I mean, think about like that whole thing when he went on ESPN and sat next to little Wayne and basically trashed Eli Manning on national TV. I mean, that was one of the most bizarre scenes ever. And that, that, and that's what got him traded was, was I think that that was the last straw. I was like, all right, enough. I don't know how you do that. Especially with the way that Eli was beloved over there and rightfully so that was not going to fly. So this is hopefully this is a teaching moment, a learning experience for him. And this is the worst it gets for Malik neighbors. I don't know what to say. He's rookies young. Shouldn't have said that. Maybe this is the last time we're talking about him saying that type of stuff, but he's frustrated, man. I mean, that the offense stinks. They don't score touchdowns. You know, they can't win at home. He's coming from a winning environment. He's got, you know, he's got Huckleberry Finn as his quarterback. He's watching Jaden Daniels in Washington in the same division, you know, go seven and two. It's just pissing him off. Now he's got to act like an adult and deal with it like a like a like a professional, but he's frustrated. You know, I I, I understand he's frustrated, but he also has to recognize where he is, who he is. You know, and that's that's usually the hardest thing for younger players to deal with. It's just like just put your head down and play, just just play the game and do what they tell you. And then you know, if you become an All Pro and you make these spectacular plays, you know, then we'll give you a little bit more freedom to open your mouth. 